right, so when we start talking about some of these right here with the birthday attack, we can see that after about 21, we were able to hit it. Well, if we go back and, and look at this, this hash, and if you're not familiar with the hash, we're just going to go through MD5, SHA, and we'll talk a little bit more about this during the, uh, um, the cryptography domain. Let's just say I have hello space world. My MD5 string for hello space world will look like this. So that's an MD5 right there. Looks a little goofy on this recording, but you just got to trust me that that's what it looks like. So if I was to um, modify this a little bit, what do you think would happen? If I was to go in and functionally modify this particular uh, hello world to say something else, I would hope that even if it's just a capital D here, I would hope that the MD5 would change. And in fact, it completely changes. You can see here, this is all lower case, MD5. And this is all lowercase, like that. So we can make the assumption then that once we're able to get a specific password, let's say like that right there, and we have the hash for that specific password, that if we see this same hash anytime moving forward, we can deduce that, in fact, that is the hash. And it's quite interesting the way that it works. And specifically, if you look at some of these uh, default password sites here on page 163, you can see uh, a lot of interesting information that's gleaned from that. Um, but what I'd like to do is go through and play around a little bit with, uh, see if we can get the hashes from the system. And then there is an exercise here, is creating a rainbow table and then working with the rainbow table to see if you can uh, crack the passwords using the rainbow table. Uh, so we're going to start here on page 159 and kind of 